Hi there, and welcome back to Lion Reads, the channel where we share powerful insights and personal growth lessons through great books. What if everything you thought about time, matter, and reality was incomplete? In just seven lessons, Carlo Ravelli takes us on a journey through the most beautiful ideas in modern physics relativity, quantum mechanics, and the mysteries that still haunt scientists today. If you enjoy what you hear and want to dive deeper, we've included a link to the book in the description below. Now, let's get started. 7 Brief Lessons on Physics 201 for is a quick yet profound guide to how we arrived at two of the greatest achievements of modern physics, Einstein's General Theory of Relativity and Quantum Mechanics. Alongside celebrating these milestones, author Carlo Rovelli also candidly discusses the difficulties and paradoxes that remain unresolved, and how science continues to strive for answers. Carlo Rovelli is a theoretical physicist who has made significant contributions to our understanding of space and time. He currently leads the Quantum Gravity Research Group at the Centre de Physique in Marseille, France. Ravelli is also the author of two acclaimed books, Reality is Not What It Seems and The Order of Time. With this book Ravelli offers readers a clear and accessible overview of modern physics and where it might lead us in the future. Our universe is a marvelous place, it is not only composed of solar systems and galaxies but also of an invisible microscopic world at the atomic level. Yet for much of human history people lived in ignorance of this vast reality and of our place within it. Even today, a deep understanding of the material world seems distant and often reserved for brilliant researchers. But in this book, Ravelli opens a door for everyone, explaining complex physics in a way that feels both simple and enlightening. Einstein's general relativity was born from a simple yet revolutionary thought. In 1905, a young man named Albert Einstein sent three papers to Annalen der Physik, one of the world's most prestigious scientific journals. Remarkably, each of them could have been Nobel-worthy. The third paper whoever stood out the most, it introduced Einstein's first theory of relativity. Today we call it special relativity. In essence, Einstein proposed that time is relative and depends on the conditions of the observer. For example, if you move fast enough, your experience of time slows down. Imagine this scenario. While Anne strolls leisurely through the city, circles the earth aboard a spaceship traveling at the speed of light, time for would pass much more slowly than for Anne upon landing. S. Watch would lag far behind Anne's Einstein's theory shocked the scientific community and made him an overnight sensation. Yet, he faced a major problem. His theory conflicted with Newton's law of gravitation, which had stood unchallenged since the 17th century. Newton had shown that gravity governs how planets and stars move and interact, an enormous step forward in understanding the universe. It was the first time humanity recognized that an invisible yet powerful force shaped the seemingly empty cosmos. Later, this empty space was filled with new concepts introduced by English physicists Michael Faraday and James Clerk Maxwell, the electromagnetic field. Alongside gravity, electromagnetic fields showed that radio waves could carry electric forces across space. Einstein spent 10 years wrestling with this problem. The result was his masterpiece, the general theory of relativity. So elegant was this theory that some have compared it to Mozart's Requiem or Homer's Odyssey. At its heart was a breathtaking insight. If an electromagnetic field exists, so must a gravitational field. But Einstein went further, proposing that gravity doesn't fill space as we once imagined. Instead, space itself is not flat it bends around massive objects like stars and planets. In other words, matter curves the fabric of space-time, and this curvature is what we experience as gravity. Other bodies then move along the curved paths dictated by this bending. Gravity, therefore, acts like a ruler that holds everything together, preventing it from flying apart. Einstein's work provided the perfect launching pad for future theories that continue to shape our understanding of the universe. In 20th century physics, two great pillars became the foundation of everything we know, Einstein's general relativity and quantum mechanics, yet the two have very little in common. Quantum mechanics also called quantum theory explores the behavior of matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic levels. It not only gives us astonishing insights, but has also led to major breakthroughs in technology, including the development of modern computers. Still. For most of us, quantum mechanics remains mysterious and nearly impossible to grasp. The field officially began in 1900 when German physicist Max Planck studied electromagnetic radiation. To simplify a calculation, Planck proposed that energy could be represented as small, discrete packets with specific values, which he called quanta instead of energy being continuous, like a flowing stream. It must exist in distinct chunks like beer served, not from an endless tap, but in bottles, cans or kegs of different sizes. Surprisingly, the math worked with incredible precision. It turned out these energy packets were not just a convenient trick, they were real. Five years later, Albert Einstein reinforced the idea by proving that light itself is made of quanta, later called photons, in the 1920s and 1930s. Further surprises came from Danish physicist Niels Bohr, who studied electrons, 
Bohr discovered that electrons and atoms could only occupy specific energy levels, and these levels defined the orbits of electrons around the nucleus. But that wasn't all. Bohr also showed that electrons could jump from one orbit to another. They could not simply slide smoothly between them, instead, they had to leap, disappearing from one orbit and reappearing in another in an instant. This phenomenon became famously known as the quantum leap. The next breakthrough came from German physicist Werner Heisenberg, who sought to explain the strange behavior of electrons. Heisenberg argued that if an electron is not observed, it cannot be said to exist in a definite position. Instead, it is described only by probabilities possible places it might be. In short, an electron is a cloud of possibilities until we measure it. The rise of quantum mechanics was a giant leap for physics. It gave us some of the most useful and universal equations, which engineers, chemists, biologists, and physicists still apply daily in their work. By the mid-20th century, both quantum mechanics and general relativity were being used to explain the universe both at the microscopic scale of atoms and subatomic particles, and at the macroscopic scale of galaxies and cosmic structure. Long before that, human understanding of the cosmos was much simpler. About 26 centuries ago, most people believed the world was flat, with the sky above. Then, Greek thinker Anaximander suggested that the sky surrounds us entirely. Soon after, philosophers like Parmenides and Pythagoras proposed that Earth was not flat but spherical, yet they still believed that planets and stars revolved around Earth. It was not until the end of the Middle Ages that Nicolaus Copernicus shifted the perspective. He placed the Sun at the center of the universe, with Earth and other stars orbiting it. By then, telescopes were improving, and our knowledge of the cosmos expanded rapidly. Earth, and even our solar system, was revealed to be just a tiny part of a galaxy containing billions of stars. By the early 20th century, this view was confirmed. Einstein then changed our understanding of space itself, from flat to curved, like a calm sea transforming into rippling waves. He even predicted that dense masses could warp space so dramatically that they formed holes in it what we now call black holes. Finally, observations revealed that the universe is expanding. By reversing this expansion, scientists concluded that the universe must once have been concentrated into a tiny, dense and incredibly hot point. It exploded outward the event we now know as the Big Bang creating the universe we live in today. Let us now turn to the second great pillar of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics. One of the first things to understand here is the nature of fundamental particles, the building blocks of the material world. We find them inside atoms, which make up everything we can see and touch, and those particles are not just protons and neutrons, but also gluons that hold the protons and neutrons together. And then there are even smaller particles like quarks. Meanwhile, photons make up the light we see, and don't forget the elusive neutrinos and bosons. All these fundamental particles form both matter and light, but here's where it gets weird. These particles do not always behave in predictable ways. Many do not move in straight lines or geometric patterns at all. That's because the world is not always what it seems. Even a rock, which appears solid and lifeless, is in reality a temporary arrangement of molecules that will one day disintegrate. Nothing is permanent. Everything is fleeting. The closest we have come to a unified theory of particles is the standard model of particle physics. It was developed between the 1950s and 70s by pioneers like Murray Gelman and Richard Feynman. The standard model has been remarkably successful in experiments, but it remains far from perfect. Unlike Einstein's theories, it is not universally admired as a masterpiece of thought, but rather a patchwork of formulas that lack complete harmony. Maybe one day a better and more widely accepted theory will emerge. Now it is time to examine the relationship between the two pillars of modern physics. In an ideal world, they would merge seamlessly, covering both the microscopic and macroscopic realms. Unfortunately, this is not the case. At present, general relativity and quantum mechanics are in conflict. Both are extraordinarily accurate within their own domains, but when combined, contradictions arise. For example, relativity describes the universe as curved and continuous, with space and energy bending around massive bodies. By contrast, Quantum mechanics views space as flat and energy as existing only in discrete packets called quanta. Faced with this dilemma, physicists are working tirelessly to create a framework that unites quantum particles with the gravitational forces of relativity. This search has given rise to the quest for a theory of everything. One of the leading candidates is loop quantum gravity LQG. LQG proposes that space itself is made of tiny, discrete loops, sometimes described as the atoms of space. This is a misleading name, however, because these loops are not found in space. Rather, they are space. In this way, LQG suggests that both space and time are not continuous but granular. Time itself, according to this view, has its own rhythm, changing with each natural process. Perhaps most fascinating is LQG's idea about the Big Bang. According to this theory, our universe may not have been the very first. Instead, another universe may have collapsed inward, exploded, 
and given birth to the cosmos we inhabit today. Let us now turn to another fascinating field of physics, thermodynamics, the science of heat. It is remarkable that this entire branch of physics arose from a single, simple question, what is heat? Today we know much about heat, but in the mid-19th century, the picture was very different. At that time, heat was thought to be a kind of fluid, a substance called caloric, flowing in and out of botanists. Of course, we now know that heat is not a fluid. It is the result of atoms moving at incredible speeds and creating friction. Atoms are always in motion, constantly vibrating. The faster they move, the hotter the object becomes. This explains why objects heat up, but it doesn't clearly explain how heat is actually transferred. For example, when you place a cold spoon into a cup of hot coffee, the spoon warms up. But why doesn't the coffee also become hotter by absorbing the heat the spoon now contains? According to 19th century physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, heat transfer occurs when hot and cold bodies meet, but it is not dictated by any absolute law. Instead, it is a matter of statistical probability. In theory, when a hot object touches a cold one, the hot object could even become hotter, though the probability of this happening is astronomically low. Another fascinating aspect of heat is how it shapes our perception of time. Imagine a pendulum swinging freely in the air. With each swing, it collides with atoms, creating friction, producing heat, and losing energy. Over time, the pendulum slows and eventually stops. In the past it swung, in the future it will not. But what if there were no friction, no heat produced? In that case, the pendulum would swing forever and, with it, our very concept of time would vanish. Human beings are naturally curious. In this sense, physicists who observe and develop theories about the world or a continuation of our earliest ancestors, who once followed the tracks of antelopes across the savannah. Curiosity has always driven us to explore unknown lands, and once the earth was mapped, we longed to reach the moon. Throughout history we have never stopped searching for the secrets of the universe. When we study nature we are not mere spectators standing outside it. We are part of the universe that modern physics seeks to understand. In fact, we are products of the natural laws at the very center of physics itself. The atoms found in distant stars are the same as those in trees, in animals, and in every human being. What makes us unique is our thoughts, our moral sense, our emotions but these, too, are part of the same physical reality that science describes, even philosophical questions such as the nature of free will fall within the realm of physics. Natural laws not only explain events but also allow us to predict what will happen next. We feel as though we have free will, that our actions are unique and unpredictable by science, and in a sense, we are free to choose, guided by our thoughts rather than external forces. Yet human behavior is not outside nature. Our decisions are shaped by the same physical laws as everything else. The brain's processes follow natural rules, just as every event in the universe follows its own determined path. One truth remains undeniable, death. Whether it is a flower, a human being, or a star in the night sky, everything is born and everything eventually dies. Species appear, thrive, and vanish. This is the eternal cycle of the universe. And it reminds us one day humanity too will disappear. But until that day comes, we will continue to explore this marvelous world driven by the same eternal curiosity that defines us. The 20th century gifted humanity with two extraordinary visions, Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. General relativity allows us to understand the big picture of the universe and how massive objects interact with one another. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, reveals the microscopic world of atoms and particles. Together, these theories have opened our eyes to the wonders of the cosmos. But there is one crucial lesson for us to remember. Human beings themselves are also subject to the very same laws of nature. Reading seven brief lessons on physics by Carlo Rovelli felt like being gently guided through the most profound mysteries of the universe. What I loved most about this book is how Rovelli combines the elegance of science with the beauty of philosophy. His words remind us that physics is not just a collection of equations, but a human story on attempt to understand where we come from, what we are made of, and what destiny awaits us. The book captures the breathtaking scope of modern physics. Einstein's relativity giving us the grand architecture of the cosmos, and quantum mechanics unveiling the strange, unpredictable dance of the microscopic world. These two pillars may still resist unification, but together they show us just how complex and marvelous reality truly is. What struck me most was Revelius' reminder that we are not separate from the universe we study. The same atoms that burn inside distant stars are the atoms that make up our bodies. We are woven from the very fabric of the cosmos, and while our thoughts, emotions and choices feel unique, they too are part of the natural laws that govern everything. The book also touches on something deeply human, the passage of time and the inevitability of death. Everything stars species, human beings comes into existence and eventually disappears. Yet, rather than feeling bleak, Ravelli turns this into a celebration of life. The fact that everything is temporary makes our curiosity, our search for knowledge, 
and our shared human journey all the more precious. For me, the greatest gift of this book is perspective. It invites us to see ourselves, not as outsiders peering at the universe but as an integral part of its more fleeting, but deeply connected to everything. It's a humbling thought, and at the same time, profoundly inspiring. In the end, Seven Brief Lessons on Physics is not just about science. It is about wonder, humility, and the beauty of being alive in a universe that still holds countless mysteries waiting to be discovered. So, what do you think are we free to choose, or are our actions written into the laws of nature? If this book made you as curious as it made me, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, grab a copy of Carlo Rivelli's Seven Brief Lessons on Physics to dive deeper. We will leave the link in the description below for you to easily search. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.